Hi again everyone. We are going to be doing matte surface rendering of complex geoforms based on the technique from the previous exercise but now you're going to be rendering your own geoform constructions. A lot of you are drawing really really small so I would suggest that you increase the size. For example this sketch here is about say 15 centimeters wide by about 12 13 centimeters high and to have four sketches on one page that's probably about a good size also it's worthwhile drawing in a larger scale so that you can render these things with some accuracy so this is the sketch that I'm going to render today it's my initial construction of a complex geoform using planar and curvilinear surfaces we have a cylinder on the horizontal surface vertical cylinder we have a cone lying on its side are two sections that have radius corners and a bit of an overhang out the back. It's drawn in two-point perspective, freehand estimated, with all my construction shown. I'm going to use this sketch as an underlay and do a trace off over the top in preparation for rendering. So this is my light trace over using a Copic multi-liner and it's just a freehand trace off just to get uh, definition clear enough for me to start to render. We can redefine our line work after we've done the rendering so it doesn't have to be overworked at this stage. Before we start rendering we want to decide where our light source direction is and also from what angle the light source is coming from. If I have a look at the features of this object and I have this nice radius edge along here, conical form and cylinder, I'm imagining that it would be nice to have the light source coming from the top right at about this angle and probably from this direction. Once I know that and I commit to that, I can start to render. I'm going to identify the light surfaces which are going to be facing upwards, the shadow side which will be all these left vertical surfaces and we're going to have shadow core and highlight on our curved surfaces, shadow core here, highlight on the top, shadow core here, highlight there. Okay, so I'm just gonna get started. As this is a tonal matte surface rendering, I'm just gonna be using the gray markers, one, three, and five, and a black and white colored pencil. So we can start rendering our light surfaces, but here I'm just going to establish some shape very quickly, just by using my number three, and I'm going to do my mid-tone Okay, so there's my mid-tone. Next I'm going to establish the shadow side. So I've got my darkest marker which is my C5 and I'm just going to block this in. My right, sorry, my left vertical surfaces. So now I'm going to establish some form on these curved surfaces. We've already done a cylinder, a vertical cylinder. Our light source is coming from this direction at this angle. I'm going to have a highlight here. This will be where my shadow core might be. And I'm just using a really light gray. This is my C1 actually. With the cone, so this is a cone lying on its side. Light source again coming from the top right direction. We know that any uh, tone has to go to this point because that's the nature of its shape. Again, I'm just using my C1 and establishing the shadow core. I'm also going to establish the smaller shadow core on the far side and what that does is it's, it establishes where the highlight is. Okay, just like what we did with the cone and cylinder in the first primitives rendering. If there's a mistake that's made, it really doesn't matter because I'm using my lightest value. Slowly build up contrast. With these radius edges, they're actually cylinders lying on their side. You can see that, right? There's my ellipse that I'm just ghosting over the top. And we would have shadow core, light source passing that tangent and again with my lightest marker establishing where that might start to turn this is actually going to be the shadow core of what would have been a full cylinder 
but I'm only using a quarter of the cylinder to establish this radius edge. And that's the same on this small one here. From that point, it actually goes down because this whole side here is vertical. It's parallel to these vertical um, shadow sides and this is going to get somewhat darker. So I can afford to just block all that in, but that's the point where it starts to turn into our lighter surface. This surface here is lying at an angle. It is on the shadow side because our light source is coming from the top right. So what I'm going to do is grade that surface. I'm actually going to use my C3. I'm just going to block this area in. It's the same tone as my mid-tone, but then I'm going to grade this surface later on. So I'm going to use my shadow side as a guide. I've got my C5 and C3, and I'm going to grade this surface upwards. I'm also going to render in the direction of the fade. Okay, so don't render up this way to fade. I would be rendering this way. Even though I blocked it in um, at an angle, here I'm just going to grade. I'll do a second pass. This is C3. Switching over now to my C5. C3 and I'm just doing layers if you like of tone and of course you want to use uh, the wetness of the marker so that it can blend and remember we also use black pencils to enhance tonal value. Okay, so there I'm getting my graded surface. Just going to hit it again with a 5. Not too much, because we are still just building value. And it doesn't matter what point you use, whether it's the brush or whether it's the chisel. More important is just to pay attention to what's going on on the paper. Here I'm using a number 1 and just blending through. Okay, so there's my graded surface. Here I'm going to enhance the shape of the cylinder um, just by adding more contrast. Remember, go back to the darkest part of your rendering. Here I'm using a C3. I'm enhancing the shadow core using my C1 to blend. And of course, leave it light on the left part of that cylinder because there's reflected light. Do the same just here. C1, blend. Be careful of losing that white. Remember, that's the, that's the highlight position. And it's just constantly building tonal value. I'm still only using a 3 and a 1. And of course I'm going to come back with my 5 to really deepen that shadow core. And we can also enhance it with our colored pencil. Going to do the same with the uh, radius edge here. As I said, it's part of a cylinder. That's the shadow core turning away from light. That's the center of the core. Here I'm using a C3 just in the middle of that core. Take my C1 and blend. This whole side here is in shadow, but I'm just blending to establish that turning radius. I haven't even committed to five C5 yet, okay? Do 
do the same with the smaller one. C3, blend. This part here is going to be C5 eventually. And while we're here, we'll also do the cone. That's the center of the core. We've already rendered a cone, we've just turned it on its side here. C3, blend. Sorry, C1, blend. And you can see I'm shifting that highlight over to where I want it to be, where the light source is coming from. This underside of the cone will be lighter because it's reflected light. And I'm just slowly building up my tonal values. So now I'm going to increase the contrast of these curved surfaces. Uh, I'm going to be starting off with the cylinder. You can see I've got my markers ready, so I'm not looking for them rummaging around on the table surface. Going straight back to that shadow core, this is number three. I can blend them by one. Just like what we did with the primitives rendering. Here, I'm still using one. Coming across. Here's my five. First time I've used five. Smack bang in the center of that core. Three to blend. One to blend. I'm going right over that highlight. So that's pretty much going to establish the contrast in the darker area for my shadow sides as well. Going to do the same for the radius edges. This is a three, smack bang in the center of that core. I'm actually going to run that three all the way down. One, to blend upwards, because that's rolling towards light source. Five, to the center of that core. And I'm actually going all the way down to there, blend with three, because I'm also setting up a little bit of reflected light coming off this horizontal surface upwards. I'm still in three. One, to blend. Okay, so that's pretty much a cylinder like that turned on its side with a little bit of re reflected light. If it gets a little splotchy like here, that's fine, because I'm going to do another pass over these mid-tone surfaces later, okay? I'm just concentrating on one detail at a time. Going to do the same on the smaller radius edge, radius corner. C3, in the middle of that core. C1 to blend. That three, I'm going to run all the way down because this is all shadow side. C5, smack bang in the middle of that core. Remember, all of this is in shadow. Oops, try and stay in the lines there. That'll get hands with pencil. Going to this, while we're here, going to do the cone. C3, right in the middle of that shadow core. Give it that triangulated shape. C1, blend. C3, 
C3, far side, smaller call. C1, blend. And be careful about the position of that highlight. Remember, if you lose the position of that highlight, we can bring it back with white pencil. It's at the moment just about shaping and building contrast. C5, chisel end, again, straight to the center of that core. Triangulated shape, C3. C1. And because this C1's probably got some C3 on it, I'm just going to add it to that and shape and turn that far side part of the cone. Okay, so we're getting good shaping. Good detail in terms of the information of what these features are. These turning, rolling edges and conical, spherical forms really need to be communicated. So now that all the general tonal values are established, I'm going to address um, this surface that is our brightest surface. This is a C1, and I'm just going to come over and block in all those light surfaces with a C1. Okay, so you remember I only did a single pass on the mid-tone, our number two read surfaces. Here I'm going to give it my second pass. Don't worry about the shadows getting uh, darker, because I'm going to be going over those in five in a minute. So that's the second pass on my number two surface reads. Here I'm going to go over my shadow side and this is where I'm going to start to really bring up the contrast. C5, which is my darkest marker. Here I'm going to make sure I've got nice clean vertical lines. Sharp edges, sharp corners. And if you make a mistake, remember we can, and we will be, tightening this up with pencil work. So there you can see full contrast now in my shadow side. So now that I've gone over my shadow side uh, a second time and it's gotten darker this object is made of the same material so I'm going to assume that the shadow of that value needs to be the same anywhere else that it's a shadow or shadow call so now I'm just going to come back and enhance these areas to bring the same contrast as my shadow side I'm going to use a 3 well actually just go straight to a 5 because that's a 5 Hit the center of this core. Three to blend. This five actually runs all the way down. Go over it again, because I want that core to be deep. Three. Yep, 
one. Okay, and now you see the contrast of that shaded side is the same as my shaded vertical surfaces. While we're here, the cone, five. Now I'm really going to concentrate on the position of this shadow core on the cone and the shaping of it. Three, to blend to that reflected light on the underside. Three, towards the highlight. One, to blend to highlight. Going over that highlight with my one. I just want to enhance the far side of this a little. This is a three, one hit, and a one to blend. We'll now bring the contrast up for the cylinder so that it's the same as the rest of our rendering. So now I'm just going to quickly evaluate the uh, upward facing surfaces. Just going to hit it again with my one just to knock back the contrast of that. And we're working quite quickly so it dries as a flat block of value. Here that transition, I want to smooth that out from that radius edge. Top surface of the cylinder. And this one right here. So we're going to go into detail phase right now with our pencil work. Oh, there's one other area. And that is actually the gradation of this angled surface. So here I'm going to use a 5 because that's my darkest shade if you like. So 5, probably to about there. Blend with 3 while it's a little wet. Blend with 1 while it's a little wet. And I'm with the blending, I'm just trying to eliminate any major steps and streaks. But you'll see in a minute or later, I'll be enhancing that with pencil work anyway, just to give us the blend. Okay, that can afford to go a little darker. Good because it is on the shadow side. So I'm just going to come all the way up with my three probably to about there and then blend with one just felt like it needed to be a little bit darker so as we move into the detail phase I actually want to finesse the top edge of these shadow sides sorry mid-tone surfaces and you can see when I do this and I'm using three and one I'm actually communicating some reflected light on the 
bottom part of that um, mid-tone surface. So I'm just using a three, which is that mid-tone. And I use a one just to blend it. And I'm gonna finesse this with uh, black pencils in a minute anyway. But it just gives me a bit of a, a sense of reflected light. Okay, I might be using the brush tip, I might use the chisel nib. It doesn't really matter as long as you get the result that you're after. And so here I'm just fading with a one because the light might hit this bottom surf, the ground plane and light up this underside area. Uh, I'm going to be dropping some cast shadows on this as well and that's when the three-dimensionality three really starts to, to show. Okay, so maybe just where that starts to turn to that horizontal surface and then just blend a little bit with my lighter marker. And you can see when I do the, uh, the line work, redefine my line work, it'll sharpen up all those details. Okay, so let's go to pencil detailing now. Because I've already covered detailing using pencils on a cylinder and a cone, and that same information can be interpreted for your radius edges. I'm just going to render along, and I'll come back to you when I am going to do something that needs a bit of a description. So here I'm just going to do some white pencil detail just to enhance the highlight areas on the curved surfaces. And for this cone, try and make that highlight go all the way down to that point. Again, not pushing very heavily and not necessarily wanting to pick up an edge. Just to bring some contrast and smoothness into that highlight again. A little bit on the reflected side. The reflected light should actually be darker, if you like, than the primary highlight. So that's our rendering so far with our marker work, our pencil work, details and finessing done. 
I'm going to now define the line weight. I'm going to put this through fast forward and I'll come back to you when I'm going to scribe down some cast shadow. So just on the leading edges, I'm just using a black colored pencil just to sharpen up where those corners are. And I want them to be about the same tonal value as the actual area that it's rendered in. Okay, so I don't want it to be a stark black line. We're just sharpening up and tightening that actual edge. Because remember, all of that was freehand rendered without a ruler, so just using pencil can just tighten up that little area, <clears throat> even on the highlight edge here. Okay, so here's the finished rendering with the marker work and pencil work done and also all the line work redefined. And this is the minimum that I'd like you to get your renderings to um, other than probably putting a background on. Uh, what I will do for this rendering though is do a cast shadow. My process is not going to be explained. Um, that's another area of study. But having said that, this is a bit of a plan that I did in terms of mapping out cast shadow. You can see that I've got lines from the bottom of a lot of those vertical lines projected on the ground plane. I've got a whole bunch of lines shooting off to the left. That's the light source direction. And then I have a lot of angled lines coming and hitting off on the tangent of radiuses or at the point of a cone and that is the angle of the light. And it's quite a task to map them on different horizontal planes. That's why I can't make that really part of this video. But it's quite effective in terms of taking your sketch to the next level. I'm going to use this as an underlay, trace it off onto my rendering, block it in, and then we'll drop in a background. Okay, so here's the sketch with the uh, cast shadow complete. 
um, you can see it adds quite a bit of dimension to the way the object sits on the ground plane. What tends to happen too is um, after you've done a rendering, uh, once you tighten up your line work, add your cast shadow, or even the background like we did with the primitives rendering, um, you need to evaluate and just double check to see if everything sits well. And this is where we can use a little bit of our artistic license as well, if you feel the sketch requires it. Just like this under edge here that's in cast shadow, because I want to define that as a part of my feature, I might just take a white pencil and just redefine that, that edge that's lost in all that cast shadow. Obviously, I want to be aware that it is in shadow, so I don't want it to be super bright like a highlight. But I'm just using some license, okay, to re or bring that area back into focus or visibility. Same through here, this little rad of that cone. You know, this vertical edge is lost in the back, sorry, in the cast shadow. So just going to use a white pencil and just in that area where it's in shadow, just scribe that edge a little bit. Okay, just to bring that edge back into visibility. Anyway, and when you have a cast shadow like this, it doesn't really need a, a colored background. In fact, it would probably do this rendering a disservice. Okay, so minimum requirement is to render your geoforms. You do not have to throw a cast shadow down, but you can use a background as we showed you in the first exercise for this sketching portfolio too. Have fun, and we'll see you next week.